Good morning. I am Kevin Price. Delighted to be with you, talking to you about you and your business. Going to spend a, to- a little time uh, talking about a company called Robotaton, and we got uh, uh, Dan Abate with Robotaton. And let me uh, let me just uh, come out, jump right in with the conversation. By the way, he's a new contributor on the program. Tell us a little bit about Robotaton and that name. By the way, I love the website. And my producer and I were discussing before the show, we were trying to figure out, was Robotaton one of the creatures that fought Godzilla? But we concluded that that was not the case. But uh, tell us about the Robotaton. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, Robotaton, uh, we're a business process automation company. We've got a cloud-based uh, platform that we integrate into people's business processes, companies' business processes, um, company-wide. The idea being that... Um, by the time we get done, um, a company is as fully automated as possible. And indeed, uh, Robotaton has not yet fought Godzilla, but that is in our in our uh, 10-year plan. Yeah, so. we need a sequel that includes that. That's a great <laughs> idea. That's awesome. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, you know what we're going to be doing with, as a contributor. You're going to be bringing on some guests in, yeah. the, uh, in the months to come that are going to be talking sure. about some of the best practices and that type of thing. What, what are some of the companies on the radar screen that you have that, to, yeah. as, as guests? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, what we're basically what we're looking for is we're talking with people. Um, one of the companies that we're looking at is a, 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 light, uh, a company that does light installations for um, all the big box stores, Walmart, Home Depot. I mean, they're one of the bigger ones that do these sorts of things. They actually just maintain light bulbs, basically. Um, and they've got a, you know, they've been around for. 50 years, 60 years, something like that, and um, we're, 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 we're wanting to find out how they've, adu- how they've evolved over time, how they've adjusted their business with, you know, as new technology became available, and, and um, you know, kind of see where they're at. And, and as far as I understand uh, from my cursory uh, conversations with them is that um, they haven't made a lot of those steps yet, and we want to find out why and what direction they're, you know, planning on going going forward. So um, it's really interesting when you talk about, you know, process automation, you know, people always think of it in terms of only manufacturing, and they don't think of it in terms of back office, in terms of service, in terms of customer interactions, um, and that's really where the value is, you know, derived when you really start to talk about, you know, this total automation that we do. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, with that, uh, you know, what, what are good, good businesses that, uh, to, for, for Roboticon to be uh, working with? You know what, um, the, I can tell you which ones are not good businesses, and then everything else is fair game. Um, generally speaking, the ones we've found to be, you know, where we bring the least value are companies that are like CPA firms, you know, professional services like lawyers, you know, law firms, that sort of stuff, because they're very isolated. They do one thing. They work in only one area, and there's a lot of, um, like in the case of lawyers, for example, there's a lot of creativity that goes into what they do. Um, there's always something new that they have to figure out, and so it's really hard to, def- you know, build a process around um, that. And I'm sure there's some, you know, things that happen within that that's, that's standardized. But for the most part, there's a lot of creativity in what they do. Any other business... And so um, you're saying they would not want to be restricted by the automation that, that they might perceive a Robotaton having. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's, there's, they don't really they don't really process anything. I mean, for lack of a better word, I mean, they might be moving documents around and, you know, have to have some sophisticated document management systems in place. But that's kind of where it stops and starts for them as, as far as their processes go, where somebody like who does, um, you know, ground transportation for the airline industry is one of our customers. Um, you know, they've got multiple people to, you know, multiple processes to manage. You've got the people that drive the trucks. You've got the trucks that are driving around that we have gps and we want to keep track of and we want to maintain their routes and their fuel efficiency. And, um, you know, we want to make sure that our, you know, our schedule matches up with the schedules of the air, you know, the airlines as planes are late. We want to make sure our schedule updates in real time. You know, all that sort of stuff. That's where you really get the value of this kind of automation, you know, the robotaton watching and, and, and adjusting uh, as things change in the real world. Yeah, no question about it. And um, in, in terms of size of firm, how small can a firm be to use your services? You know what? That's actually a good question. The um, you know we like to say that from a revenue perspective, like when we're out hunting, basically for the right deals, we say that they have to be you know five to ten million in revenue minimum. Generally, more in the tens of millions range. But that said, um, we've actually done you know depending on what the company is you know, what their profit margins look like, what their, you know, business structure is. We've gone into companies that were less than a million dollars, you know, that were maybe profitable a hundred grand a year to the owner, and we've, you know, 
hacked them up so that there was only, uh, by the time we were done, there was three, four hundred thousand dollars worth of profit on a million dollar business. Mm -hmm. So um, it really depends on what the situation is. But for the most part, they tend to be a little bit larger companies. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, what's the largest in terms of revenue? Um, well, right now we're looking at, a, at the, um, uh, the largest um, American thermal solar manufacturer company in the country, and they're doing a little over $100 and some million. Dollars. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and they've got a whole manufacturing component and stuff, too, which we're not going to get involved in, you know, like factory automation that much, but because they've already got those, some of those systems in place. But what we're going to do is hook our system up to those systems so that those are all being monitored through the one centralized Robotaton system. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, when, you decide, you know, when, when you decide to work with a company and, and uh, they agree to have you come on board, what are the, some of the challenges that you typically face? Well, you know what, this, that's, a, that's an interesting question. The biggest challenge that we face with uh, especially, you know, family-owned or smaller companies, smaller in terms of that they're very closely held, you know, private companies, is that um, it's the resistance to um, change, and not just change in general, but change that's going to displace or change their staff structure. Uh, We actually had a deal that we just are kind of in the midst of. We are moving it down the line, and all of a sudden the um, decision maker says to us, you know what? Yeah, I was thinking about it, and yeah, I could save a lot of money, and I could, you know, increase my efficiency, but I just want to increase the efficiency to the point that my people become more efficient. I don't want to have to displace anybody. And so our response to that was, well, that's great if you can, you know, triple or quadruple your revenue overnight because your people are going to be so efficient, they're going to have nothing to do, (laughs) you know, at your current levels, at which point you'll have to displace them in some way. You know, you have to redeploy them somewhere else or lay them off or whatever you want to do. And it's funny, it's that resistance that we find to be the most difficult to overcome is, is that more of an emotional resistance as opposed to just, you know, numbers. Yeah, which is why uh, you know when you're when you're trying to pitch your your service, you got to get as high up on the food chain as possible, where you got yeah. people thinking in terms of their shareholders, thinking yep. in terms of their shareholders rather than thinking existentially. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, wait a minute, you're going to put me out of business? What are you talking about? I I don't like what you do. Yeah, so you know you you, you know you don't want the you don't want the uh, deputy uh, CFO. <laughs> Right. You know, our HR director in particular, you want right. uh, you want higher up that chain, the higher the better. Well, really cool, uh, Dan Abadi. We're, we're looking forward to what you're going to be doing with Robotaton here on The Price of Business. Looking forward, forward to those future interviews. And thanks so much for being with us. Absolutely. Thanks, Kevin. It's always good to talk to you. You bet. You too. When we come back, much more for you. By the way, uh, it's Robotaton.com. You want to check that out. By the way, best content here shows up over there at USDATAReview.com. This is The Price of Business.